So I apologize, it's been so long since I posted an upload, guys. Uh, but we've just been waiting on packages, then we got a damn snowstorm here in Kentucky. It, it's been a damn fiasco here. I'll show you guys real quick. Quite a damn bit. This is a bunch for Kentucky. And we ain't had this much in years. Since I was a little kid, we ain't had this much in years. We probably got four or five inches anyway, maybe. Probably four inches. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, playing in the old lady's Jeep. That's what we did all day yesterday. We just, I was teaching her to do donuts. She was taking videos, it, it's fun. We took Max out with us. Uh, anyway, it, it was a good time. Um, even, <laughs> I, I'm gonna quit rambling and we're gonna get to business. Um, but our damn local police department, they got in trouble because somebody filmed them through their window at their house doing donuts. I think that's funny stuff. It's on Facebook. Um, if you guys want to see it, I think, uh, I'll try to leave a link in the description. I don't, I don't remember where I saw that. Ashton showed me. Anyway, nonetheless, we have finally got our damn transmission jack in the mail. Um, we ended up going with uh, Torin Big Red. It's just a thousand pound transmission jack. Uh, should be plenty for us. Uh, these transmissions, these MV5600s are monsters. So it's gonna be a little sketch as it is, but I'm gonna throw it together and we got come underneath here. I've got all of the transmission bolts off, except for this one, this one, and this one. We just got three, I just wanted to have it halfway ready. Um, but I'm gonna leave though the rest of them because we're gonna split the transfer case from the transmission just to make it a little bit lighter. Um, oh yeah, you guys know the deal. All right, so we're going to throw this thing together real fast. Uh, and then I'll catch up with you guys because I, I got to let my camera charge for a little bit. I want to throw it together and get this damn transmission out. Um, I know this video is a little scattered, but some still good, awesome points nonetheless. So let's get to it. Okay, so we have got the transmission out. Sorry, guys. We got the transmission out. Transmission jack um, suffered some injuries, to say the least. She's a little tweaked, guys. Just a little tweaked. Um, I had faith in old Big Red over here, but um, right off rip, uh, when the transfer case about maxed the damn thing out. Uh, I was nervous with the transmission, but I really want to get the bitch out because I have been sitting on this for about a week now waiting on shit. And it, oh, God damn it. Just this time of year, it's always hectic trying to mess with shit. Anyway, we got the transmission out. Uh, she uh, ever so gracefully laid itself on the floor. <laughs> no, we was able to um, halfway help it lay down on the ground without hurting her back. Cause I'm not hurting my damn back with this thing. I'd rather just let it fall. Um, but so the transmission fluid, which I am covered in, transmission fluid was quite gross and it is quite disgusting in here as well. Um, clutch fork, pretty nasty. Um, it should be factory clutch fork, factory clutch packs and everything. Um, we do get, we got a new pilot bearing. Uh, we got a new clutch fork. We got the works for this thing. It's all pretty simple to reinstall and I'll go over it all with you guys 
here shortly. So we're gonna clean all that out. I don't know if I'm gonna paint the outside yet, but I will clean it up and get all this rusty crusty off anyway. But we'll come underneath here. It don't look god awful. It really don't. Uh, like I say, we'll we'll get it out. We'll get it out. I'm gonna take a look at the clutch packs and everything and see what we're dealing with. Um, but it doesn't look too god awful, and it doesn't stink to high heaven either. So who? Anyway, who knows? Now, we got a new clutch anyway. We're replacing it nonetheless. But we'll get this thing pulled out and kind of inspect it, uh, and then we'll get to cleaning all that out, inspect everything in there. Th So, I'm actually jumping ahead on you guys just a little bit. We went and ran some errands and stuff like that and got some tools that we needed. Uh, ran to Harbor Freight, picked up an engine hoist just so we can get this some bitch up in the air um, by myself. You guys know the deal. Um, so, we went and got an engine hoist, and for the damn starter on these things, they didn't have no damn spline sockets, of course, and you need them to get these factory clutch damn bolts off of the starter. They are a pain in the dick, to say the damn least. Uh, probably gonna go ahead and replace them some bitches with some standard bolts. Um, so, uh, while I was letting you guys charge up and everything, we'll throw the engine hoist together here in a little bit. Um, but I went ahead, uh, we got the flex plate off, we got the clutch pack off, went ahead and removed the clutch fork um, from the transmission. I'll go over that here in a second. And then we got our adapter plate removed as well. We're gonna clean it up really good. And if you guys can see what's going on here, this is the back side that faces the engine. For your rear main sits all right here bring you guys underneath here it's something you're definitely going to want to do while uh while you get the transmission out you guys can see there is oil everywhere and it seems to be coming from our rear main seal here so we're going to go ahead and pop it out and we got one of those sitting on the workbench or sitting on the part shelf over there we're going to go ahead and replace it and i'm just beating my head against this damn block right now because I should have that fleece coolant bypass, and I should be throwing that son of a bitch in, but I'm not. Um, it's okay. We'll do it. In, we'll do it on down the road. The transmission's definitely not coming back out for that job. We'll just we'll tough it out and get it done. The fleece coolant bypass it just utilizes this port here and reroutes the coolant so that um, cylinders five and six, so on and so forth, they get the proper cooling. And these early third gens, that is a serious serious problem. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and yank this rear main seal out and I'll show you guys my other one I got um, And then we'll go ahead and jump into getting the transmission cleaned up um, Getting everything greased up and getting everything reinstalled. Oh, yeah, one more thing I don't know where I'm gonna get to exactly. I don't know if I'll, I'll probably won't roll it over until tomorrow um, I'll go ahead and get the transmission thrown back up in the truck today But our where's that? I'm running around like crazy. Here we go. Our rear transmission mount is shot Hey, she is gone a roo. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and replace that bad boy too. You guys can see it is not not good. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that too. We got one on order. And it's supposed to be here first thing in the morning. Um, so that's cool. So just real quick, I'm gonna run over there, uh, scram some parts out, go ahead and yank the rear main seal out, throw it in. I'm not gonna spend too much time on that, uh, and we'll get to the goods. Alright guys, so it is the next day. Um, of course, we had to wait on some parts um, at advance, and we're going to go pick them up here in a little bit. But before I left the shop yesterday, we went ahead and got our new rear main installed. Uh, don't mind this messy gasket maker. Uh, I just like to throw a little bit of gasket maker on right there. Don't have to use any specific. I just like to throw some on there, peace of mind. Um, especially because you got to yank the transmission if you want to fix a leak here. So, might as well prevent all. Went ahead and cleaned up the starter. It was all gunked up. I went ahead and cleaned it up some. Best I could. Plan on replacing it with the XDP starter here pretty damn soon. New rear main, you guys can see. It's super simple to install. Um, really, the hardest part is just getting uh, the old rear main out. You gotta mangle it to get it out. Um, I suggest get the seal out while it's on the truck. If you're just, just literally replacing the rear main seal, that's all you're gonna do. You're just gonna yank the seal out from here and press the new one on. Um, but I replaced the gasket right behind our rear main seal plate here. 
Um, so I pulled it off and then got the seal out, but it was, it's real fucking hard unless you got a shop press. Then you can just press it out. I don't have a press here, so I had to drill some bitch out. Whatever. Just be careful not to nick up your edges because you will cause a leak. I filed that little nick down right there. That wasn't me, I swear. He. <laughs> um, so we got our rear main seal all pressed in, all nice and even, good to go. Went ahead and cleaned up all underneath here. Try not to hit my head. And we got our adapter plate all cleaned up. This thing, let's see, make sure you guys, this thing looks amazing. But that seal right there, I have seen it leak before as well, and a lot of people don't pay it no mind. So uh, go ahead, give it some cleaning, make sure it's gonna seal up nice and good. So this thing looks good, <laughs> 10 out of 10 in my book. So I'm gonna bolt it up real quick. Then I gotta throw together uh, this new engine hoist back here so I can get the damn transmission in the air since I'm here by myself. And uh, let's try to get this same thing done. <laughs> Just real fast, I wanna go over everything that we got from our guys at South Bend. Um, amazing kits. These things are beefy as hell. Damn good replacement. I was gonna say that's the factory clutch, but it's a Vier, Velair, however you wanna pronounce it, clutch. Uh, and it's not much to brag about. So I just want to go over everything that we got in the kit, and then I'll touch base with you guys every step for the installation. I know it's been kind of willy-nilly for the uninstall, but everything you guys need to know for the install, I will definitely go over with you guys. Um, so, we got some new flywheel bolts. Make sure and utilize them bad boys. Make sure you got some good thread locker. Use those. Um, typically, like I said, I'll go over it. You, you'll go about 100 foot-pounds on these. Um, starting at about 50, work up to about 100. Um, so... What else we got? Okay, so we've got a new clutch release bearing. And you guys, make sure your hands are pretty clean while you're doing this. We've got our new clutch release bearing here. And I'll show you guys the old one here. This one is quite wore out. I don't know if you guys, hang on. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear. And bearings are about done. She's all over the place. So we've got a new one of them bad boys. And everything that we have here, we're gonna make sure, hit it with some brake clean. We're gonna hit it with our air hose. Get all the packing junk out of it. Make sure and do that. Um, so, new clutch fork as well. And I'll, I'll, tell, I'll show you guys again here in a little bit. Let me see if I can find it. I'll be able to see it. It might be under there. I'll show you guys whenever we go to install. But there is a proper orientation for the clutch fork itself. And I'll show you guys that here in just a minute. Clutch alignment tool. Definitely, definitely use that voice. It'll make your life a whole hell of a lot easier. Save you some hassle. Okay, so on to the main enchilada. So this is a dual disc clutch. Like I say, guys, go ahead, disassemble everything, clean it thoroughly. Um, you've got some Allen head bolts. I believe they're three eighths that hold the clutch pack together itself. So we've already got those bad boys out. And there's really, it's really simple to throw these clutches together. Um, it's kind of hard to get everything backwards or to get it wrong, I should say. So. I'm gonna go ahead. There you go, guys. The first one, and then we'll move on to our first disc. Try not to grab all the friction material. Try to grab it by the center if you can. But guys, so we just picked it up straight like that. One easy way to remember so that you don't get mixed up. Pick it up. Flipper. Exactly what we did. Exactly what we're gonna do. Just to make sure we can keep orientation correct. Okay, next. Your next disc is gonna be right underneath here. Pop that bad boy off. And they do hit you with some yellow paint so you can get orientation right for the flywheel for this plate here. Set aside and we yank out our second disc. I mean, man, these things are amazing compared to that Vier clutch. These things are absolutely killer. Okay, so, flip that bad boy on over. And here we go, we've got our new flywheel. Comes with a brand new pilot bearing, already installed. Can't beat that, this thing is quality. And you talk about fucking heavy. I do recommend, if you can, um, cut the head off of a bolt so that you got studs sticking out so you can set this bad boy up on there. It's about 50 pounds, you don't want this thing tumbling down your damn foot. Not a good day. Uh, so I just kinda wanna touch base with everything that came in the kit. This is everything that came in the kit. I gotta make a parts run. We got a rear transmission mount that we need. Um, I need some more brake clean. And uh, I, don't, I don't forgot what else I need. But uh, we're gonna run real fast and I'll just catch you guys here in a second. I'm not gonna bring you guys along. This video is getting too damn long. So uh, I'll catch you guys here in a second.
All right, guys, so we are ready to get this damn thing prepped and ready to go. Um, ran to the park store and stuff like that. Ran on home, let the dog out. Um, they didn't have my park. Um, apparently, it's coming from Nashville, and they are shut down because of this damn snowstorm and ice and whatnot, which is okay. Let's get to throw the old one in for now, and I'll probably make another video throwing in the rear transmission mount. Anyway, so we're going to jump straight in uh, to get this thing prepped up, get the clutch fork installed and the clutch release bearing, all that good shit. So you guys can see, we got it cleaned up pretty damn good. It's tough to get it much better. Uh, I don't have any water here or anything. I would hit it with some water and degreaser and hit it with some brake clean, all that good shit, but it's okay. We got it way better than it was, you guys saw. So just to go ahead and start off, um, if you're using a South Bend dual disc or a South Bend product, they do recommend on your pivot ball here for your clutch fork to remove the small washer that's behind it. It's a 19 millimeter. We already got ours busted loose. So we're gonna go ahead and pop it out. Maybe. There you go, guys. There's your pivot ball. And it just has one small washer on the back. And for clearancing purposes, they want you to remove that small washer. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to clean her up a little bit. And go on and just thread it right back in. I like these style videos. I like doing installs. I feel like it's kind of my thing, really. Uh, torque spec, I don't know. I'm just gonna get it hand tight because that's about as tight as it was. It wasn't very tight. One way to stay safe, I am prone to snapping bolts. Go ahead and choke up on that damn wrench so you don't give it too much pressure. <laughs> you guys are like me, you're prone to doing that shit too. Right there. That's all she needs. You don't have to give her no look at Douglas. It's okay. All right, so one key thing you guys are gonna wanna remember, let me go ahead and, oh, here, I'll show you guys real fast and then I'll get into it. Um, okay, so your clutch release bearing here. If you're doing this yourself, guys, and you don't know what you're doing, please, 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 just put grease on everything. High temp grease, wheel bearing grease, whatever the case may be. But sometimes these clutch release bearings, they're a self-centering bearing. For one, you guys can see it's, it centers itself but there's a little grease groove on the inside there. This one does have some grease in there, but we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna wipe it out, and we're gonna throw some good grease in there. We've got some good high temp wheel bearing grease. Um, I, I love it, pride and true, doesn't sling, doesn't make too much of a mess, uh, doesn't burn off, so that's my main thing. Um, so just real fast, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna throw this bad boy onto the clutch fork. And so, what I was talking about earlier with the clutch fork, it can be installed both ways and the clutch fork is shared between the nb4500 and v5600 and the g56 uh, it's a pretty cool feature for the dodges so what you're going to want to do they have this one ever so graciously marked pivot ball okay but we've got a part number down here in this case just a part stamp not a number um bottom left is always where that part number is going to be i don't care what clutch, what clutch fork you have it's where it's going to be bottom left um also another tail you've got these ridges right here where your clutch release bearing is gonna ride. So we're gonna go ahead. You might have to set it down on the workbench to kind of walk these clips in, but you're just gonna kind of, you guys see how the clips are. You're just gonna take it and you're gonna kind of just walk it in sideways like that. Yeah, I might have to set it down to do it. Give me just a second, guys. All right, guys, so we have got our clutch release bearing installed. We've got grease in there nice, or we got it greased up nicely. We're gonna clean up all the residual, of course. You guys can see how those clips work. Um, if you need to, just reference the one that you took off um, or take pictures, whatever need be. Just always take precautions, guys. If you're not too um, wrench savvy or mechanic savvy per se, uh, just take precautions. Take extra precautions. I know there's a bunch of YouTube heroes out there. Um, so, what we're going to do now, just find a piece of paper or if you've got a grease packet, that's even better. Um, some uh, clutch distributors, they will give you individual packets of grease. Um, but just get yourself a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, whatever you got laying around, it'll work. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to grease up these splines real nice, and we're going to take one of our clutch discs, slide it on there, make sure everything is sliding and operating 100% correctly. Um, so what we're going to do, grab a little bit of grease on our fingers, don't go crazy. Kind of get it in there. We'll do a little bit at a time. Of course, you're going to clean up the residuals, guys. Don't freak out. 
kind of rub it in there, get it all over. Rub it in there nice and nice and good like. You guys know the deal. Alright, don't you love grease? Like I say guys, you don't have to go crazy. Just enough to make sure that everything is gonna slide and operate properly. That's the last thing you want is one of your clutch discs to be binding up on your input shaft here and have notchy shift in or grind into gears. It's not worth it. Not worth it. Especially the trouble it is, especially if you're paying somebody to do it too. That's my thing. I don't know if the damn places I would go to would go this far. So that's why we're doing it. up pretty good and like I say guys there was just about zero grease present on the on the old uh, clutch assembly there was I didn't see hardly any I just want to get some of that residual off okay so now all we're gonna do clean hands are essential <laughs> we're gonna take our clutch disc here and we're gonna go ahead place it on our input shaft here line up correctly there she goes as you can see that grease is going to help it a lot yeah and there you go she's starting to free up now see it had rust on it and shit like that and that's what you don't want is rust inside your transmission that is not going to work take it out clock it one time get to go on there again there she goes and i think we're actually going to throw a little more grease I'm satisfied. Take your clutch disc, clock it a hundred damn times, make sure that thing is nice and free. So we're gonna get our clutch fork installed now. And there's just a couple more little jimmy spots that I recommend you throw some grease on, uh, like your little pivot ball here. Um, the back side of your input shaft. Throw a little grease on there as well. And then as for your clutch fork itself, go ahead, you're gonna wanna throw some back here. And you're gonna throw some back here on the pivot ball side and the hydraulic side. And I forgot to tell you guys, but right on the little mounds here where your uh, clutch release bearing hits, go ahead and throw some grease behind there too. Doesn't hurt a single bit because that is a spot that uh, has some friction on it. That's for damn sure. So, go ahead. Like I say, guys, you don't have to go crazy. Like I've been saying this whole time. But some grease is better than no grease. Okay, so we've got our clip here. You guys remember how that bad boy works? Go ahead. Let's see if we can get that bad boy on here. Make sure everything's operating like it should. Yeah, that's nice, guys. That's fucking nice. Love it. And just like that, guys, she's installed. Super easy. I recommend taking the time to learn to do it yourself, guys, because there is nothing to it. Make sure you got everything operating correctly. Oh, yeah, guys. I love it. I'm gonna grab a new rag. We're gonna clean up all the spots that don't necessarily need grease and don't necessarily need my nasty fingerprints. And that is some happy innards, if I do say so myself. <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Everything is operating absolutely 100%. No strange noises, no pops, no nothing. Got everything reinstalled, got everything greased. Everything looks awesome. Um, so guys, this is what you should be looking at, 100%. So, um, I think the next thing I'm going to do, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I'll tell you guys in a second.
I just went ahead and threw the flywheel up in the truck, guys. Uh, it's a little bit wonky. You know, it's a 50-pound unit, so I just went ahead and threw it up in there and got the bolt started. Um, haven't torqued them at all, um, but I did throw some red Loctite on those. Don't forget that. Um, do not use an impact. Just don't do it, guys. I see a lot of people doing it. I mean, if it's a thrash car and you just don't care, go ahead, but I do not recommend it. Uh, not at all. So, we went ahead and got them all started. We haven't torqued them at all yet. Um, just take a small ratchet, go ahead and tight, or get them all snug by hand, and go on a star pattern per usual. You guys know the deal. Um, so, you're going to need something right like this here. Uh, you can take one of your pressure plate bolts, go ahead and thread it in, and get some kind of uh, flat stock, whatever you need. I had this laying around. Um, and just get a couple bolts started, get one of your transmission bolts started, and get one of your pressure plate bolts started. And that'll keep your flywheel from turning over. If you have a barring tool, that's even better. Go ahead and use that son of a bitch. But that'll work plenty, plenty, plenty. So let's go ahead and torque these bad boys. We're going to do the first round in a star pattern at 50 foot-pounds. And then we'll do the same thing next at 100 foot-pounds. And then check them over one more time, and we'll be good to go be... pressure plate itself calls for uh, 40 to 45 foot pounds. So all we're going to do now, we're just going to go around, we're going to snug them up by hand, and then we're going to hit it with about 20, and then we're going to go up to, yeah, we'll hit it right in the middle per usual, it is about 43 or so. All right, guys, so we've got everything tidied up under there. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I'm going to show you guys a couple more things. Um, but I want to move on. I'm going to make a video specifically on the transfer case because we got some goodies going on with it. So you got to stay tuned for it. But we've got the flywheel. Uh, we've got it bolted on, torqued down. Um, we've got the clutch disc, the uh, separator plate, another clutch disc, and the pressure plate. And we got it all torqued down. Good to go. Um, so I went ahead, just threw the transmission back up in there. But before I put my cross member on, sorry, I'm spitting everywhere. I wanted to show you guys what it really takes. Uh, I recommend... Spend the money, get a heavy duty jack, because uh, we had to kind of modify our jack or our transmission jack a little bit. But I just want to come underneath there and show you guys kind of what it takes to stay safe. <laughs> I got some straps everywhere. I got two straps and I got the one safety chain on there. And um, I did have another chain running frame to frame right in the center. Just in case anything did happen, this is all just loose right here. You guys get a better idea. We're going to clean all this up when we go to mount the transfer case back up. And I opted not to paint the damn thing because this truck is going to be more or less our daily driver workhorse. I don't really see a, see a point in it. Not, not to me anyway. But we did clean up the bell housing and everything pretty damn good. And it, it looks awesome. So what we're going to do, we already got all of our bolts, transmission bolts mounted up. We're good to go. We just got to put up all of our accessories on it. One thing that I want to reiterate to you guys, 100%. Do not use your transmission bolts to chase your transmission on or to pull it on, whatever the case may be. It's going to be an effort. Um, if you guys have ever done a transmission job, getting that input shaft uh, in through the pilot bearing and everything, getting it lined up perfect, it can be a pain in the ass, especially if you're by yourself and especially with this donkey dick transmission. Um, so just take your time. Don't chase the damn transmission on with bolts because there is dowels that uh, line the transmission up and you can damage those dowels and over time uh, stuff just won't line up right. So don't do it. Um, we're happy. I'm happy. Got it on by myself. That's all I could ask for. Um, so like I say, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump over there. I got the transmission on the tailgate of old gray, gray duty over here. And I got some goodies for it that I'm going to address. I ended up having to throw my old rear transmission mount back on for the time being. You guys can see the play in that thing. That is not good. Um, but since it's damn weather, can't find one anywhere. Um, and all the hubs for the parts stores, they're shut down. I was going to order one, should have done did it. But anyway, um, I'm going to show you guys what we're working with here in Kentucky. Good lord, man. This is dumb. 
<laughs> this is fucking dumb. This is corn tuck. We're not supposed to have that much damn snow. Uh, that's what me and Ashton want to head down south. Um, so, anyways, guys, like I say, I'm going to move on to the transfer case back here. I'll show you guys. We got it sitting back here on the gray truck. Um, we, you guys can see we've got some seepage going on back here. So we're going to take care of that shit if you, get, if you catch my drift. And uh, we're going to kind of... Uh, plug in all the accessories, all that shit. I'm gonna quit blabbing. Let's move on to the next video. You guys make sure and like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I know this video is a little bit everywhere. It was over across a few days. It's because we've been waiting on parts and just running rampant trying to get this shit done. Um, but make sure and like, comment, subscribe. Check me out on Instagram at woodsway underscore auto. Per usual, check out the old lady at all hell underscore JK. Um, one thing I can learn from this video, don't cheap out on your transmission, Jack, guys. Uh, so I'll see you guys in the next one.